and welcome back. Uh, we're talking about World War II. Um, we just got finished with the end of the war, with the dropping of the nuclear bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But what I want to do now is spend some time and talk about the American home front. And the American home front is incredibly important uh, when, when talking about World War II because part of what the big reason was that the United States became such a huge powerhouse after the war and, and during the war was, was a lot had to do with, with some of the issues going on at home. Um, so what we'll do is we'll start talking about, I think, what is one of the most important topics of the home front is, is women and, and women during World War II. Now, there, there, are, there are lots of different accounts of women uh, working in factories and, and, and such. But, but World War II, because more income was starting to come to women, because most of the men were at war, uh, women started becoming really more independent and, and this has been going on since since world war one and, and even before that with with uh with suffrage and everything but at its peak 16 million women were working in industrial positions during the war just wow that is so many women going out and joining the workforce during that period of time and also at this time though it's it's not really here there was about two million women that were actually serving in the military as well well, well, let's revise that number down. That number is not correct. It was actually more of about 150,000. And they were part of what was known as the WAX, W-A-C, and the WAVES, W-A-V-E. And, and they were organizations that were uh, basically the women's, uh, the women's section of the, the Army and the Navy. So th those are very interesting um, things that were going on too. So women were finally being allowed into the military. And many women used work and joining the military to gain independence while others focused on supporting their country. There were a lot of women that looked at Rosie the Riveter and saw um, the, <laughs> the pulled up sleeves as, as a new wave for women. And, and other people just wanted to support the nation. But a double standard started to arise um, as independent women become more feared by government officials and for being promiscuous so you see here there are these these soldiers down here and they might be coming back or or on leave and and here is a nice girl but she may look clean but uh she may pick up a disease like syphilis or gonorrhea so so stds and other thing were <laughs> were an issue as well during the time period at, at least it was a fear among the 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 chiefs of staff in the army and the navy an interesting book that kind of documents women in uh, women at the home front is a book called Slacks and Calluses by uh, Constance Bowman. And, and basically it follows Constance and Clara through uh, three months at a Allied, bom uh, a Allied bomber building facility, which it was a very interesting book and not too long of a read. There's little illustrations, so it's, it's kind of fun. And, and as women, as the war started to end, more men started coming back home and, and women were kind of gently forced back into traditional gender roles and as we'll see in the future that will actually have certain consequences and this is a, an excellent interview of a of a factory worker an african-american woman who worked in a factory during world war ii uh, another uh, large part of the home front effort was the government was trying to ration and save a lot of food a lot of metals be, because uh, essentially all the uh, production that was going on in the United States was really industrial based. So there was rubber and metal and paper drives. Uh, it be, really became a norm in the United States to just ration and, and to, to have these victory gardens. Um, these gardens were supposed to help, you know, individuals in, in cities and rural areas eat better and, and to, of course, save more food for the soldiers. As you see here is, um, you could squeeze one more individual into this car here as they go off to work. So they're all about trying to save money. Um, and, of course, this is a really interesting aspect that when people talk about the recovery that occurred during World War II, you know, yes, the production in the United States increased so significantly. Um, it, we were essentially at almost above 100% proficiency and, and productivity. But the quality of life still was lacking because a lot of the food and items that people wanted to buy um, were really 
<laughs> they were rationed. You, you couldn't buy certain foods and certain things without these war rations here. So you know, people really weren't living the high quality life that they thought they would when, when the economy started pumping up. And, and of course, a lot of people also put their money into war bonds. And war bonds were basically um, you know, slips of paper that you bought from the United States government. And you gave the, the money essentially to the government to run the war. So um, the, the government also ran up a huge debt after or during World War II that they had to pay off after. And here's a couple, you know, photos and things like that and, and posters. Uh, another incredible aspect of the home front is, is this ridiculous, and I mean ridiculous, amount of, of propaganda and, and support that the government was, was essentially pumping back into us. So these, all these videos that you see here are incredibly quality. Uh, if you want to watch a cartoon, here is the famous hair meets hair episode of, of Bugs Bunny. Uh, this is one of my personal favorites, which is uh, How I Hate to Get Up in the Morning by Irving Berlin, which was performed in This is the Army. There's also the, the famous song of The Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy by the Andrew Sisters, and just sort of like a basic overview of um, some propaganda. And, and if you do have a moment, this is, this is a very important piece of, of um, film that came out in 1940, and it was called The Great Dictator by Charlie Chaplin. And as you see here, I mean, basically you see the little mustache and the, the armband. This was, this was a direct parody of Nazi Germany right here. And, and, and Charlie Chaplin at, the, at this end speech does a really wonderful job um, making his case for the movie and, 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 and what humanity needs to do. And so all of these things really, um, you can see you know, loose lips might sink ships, the very famous, very, very famous uh, propaganda um propaganda poster uh don't fall for enemy propaganda you see there's a little hitler and a little japanese fellow <laughs> look at that against <laughs> look at this this is, this is an interesting anti anti propaganda <laughs> and in general there was lots of government support for this for these propagandas obviously warner brothers was backing the united states effort uh, also disney was a very large um, contributor to propaganda and support during the war. So the government really introduced a lot of new departments that were meant to support all these efforts as well as, of course, uh, create it themselves. But now we go into some of the darker aspects of the home front aspect of the United States, and it has to do with what's called Japanese internment. So, so what happens is, of course, in 1942, when here, um, Pearl Harbor gets bombed, Franklin Delano Roosevelt um, creates the executive order on uh, 9066, which was the initiation of internment for all Japanese citizens in 1942. And here's a, here's a poster saying, attention, nearest air raid shelter, instructions to all person of Japanese ancestry. So, I mean, this was a huge effort, and it was, it was really big out west in California and Oregon, because, of course, Japan being closest to... California via the Pacific Ocean, a lot of Japanese people came to California and moved slightly out west to like Arizona and stuff. Um, and many individuals were just kind of rounded up in whatever bags they could carry. They were basically told their property would be intact and then they were shipped off to one of these camps out in, um, out in the west. So you have some of the more favorite, famous ones like Heart Mountain and uh, Tool Lake. And, and the thing is, is there was many different types of camps. They weren't just basic internment camps. They had camps where they'd, they'd think they'd want to send spies. Um, they had camps for people who were part of the military. They even had separate camps for different generations of Japanese folks who were coming into the country. Though the United States did try at least somewhat to keep families together, which was, I guess, a, a difference than what was going on in, in Europe at the time. Uh, and... When the war ended in 1945 and, and all these folks were sent home, like this little boy who was at the Hart Mountain internment camp in Wyoming, a lot of these people who were coming back home to California, they, they really lost all of their possessions at home. Their homes were essentially not foreclosed upon, but they were taken away from under their, under their feet because they were away. And there were thousands and millions of dollars lost of Japanese residents during 
the the internment. Oops, sorry about that. So so this was a huge stain on the American effort at home during World World War Two. It's our own little concentration camps in a way, though in no way were they as serious as as of course the death camps that the Nazis had. The, it was a very serious issue in American history that you know needs to be addressed, and everyone needs to be informed that even even. In America, where democracy is supposed to reign true, that we have a tendency to react almost violently to things that have that happened to us. And, and Japanese internment is is no exception to that. And here's also a nice video um, that kind of shows you and has nice uh, narration of some of the facilities and things like that. And, and what some of the li what some of the lives that the Japanese lived during the internment. <laughs> 